So usually on my channel, and I have been saying that I'm going to branch out and talk about other stuff, so I guess this is like the first uh, video where I'm doing that. But usually on this channel, I talk about the game engine I'm building. But today, let's talk about an existing game engine, Unity. Because Unity has been a huge part of my life so far. I've been a Unity developer for around five or six years. Four of those years have been how I make a living, how I afford this apartment is work I do on Unity, and it has been basically all the real jobs I've had have been Unity. So you could say I have a little experience with the engine, and most recently, I don't really have like an official title yet, but I'm most technical co-founder at a startup where I do most of the super advanced Unity programming. So even though I am creating my own engine, Unity is the game engine I actually use for stuff. So to give a recap of what's happened over the last, I want to say 42 hours, 48 hours, how many hours is the couple, two, two days the last two days. Basically, Unity announced a new pricing plan where developers would be charged every time somebody downloaded a game built with Unity. Not games that are built with Unity from now on, but all games that have ever been built with Unity will now be charged a runtime cost, where through some magical system they have not disclosed yet and apparently have no intention of disclosing per install or per the the magical number of installs you owe them either 20 cents or depending on your plan which this is obviously a tactic to get you to upgrade to another plan which is like that that's fine okay if i'm making money with unity i'll upgrade to a higher plan like that's fine but on the higher plans you get charged uh less as like it ramps up so in all, if you do the math, it's not that bad. As long as you're not a free-to-play mobile game that has trillions of installs and like makes two cents per person. But you know, it's a trillion all is a trillion installs, so you don't care that it's only two cents per person. But suddenly, this runtime fee would make it so you get hit with a bill larger than anybody could ever pay. <laughs> I guess what I am personally mad about is not necessarily the, the actual cost that will be hit with people because for the most part, developers are gonna be fine. And Unity has said this themselves. 80% of all our users will be unaffected. 80% of users are the people who install Unity and then n never pick it up again. Like the majority of users, they play around with it for like, you know, a couple days a week, maybe like a fun side project. The the other 20% though are people that actually use it to earn a living, and this affects basically all of them. So, I, in a sense, I feel like that 80% is a little bit disingenuous, because yeah, most people don't release games. But what about the people who do? Those are the people that actually care. Where was I going with this? I wrote on this marker board to remind myself what I actually want to talk about. Is it the glare covering that? Installed community, and just brand trust in general. Installs, I'll just briefly touch on this. How? They've been saying in like political speech that both the client won't phone home or like the installer won't phone home to a server and like just API call, there's been an installation. It seems like they're both saying that isn't the case and that is the case in the direct q a is very political speech of well you know we're in compliance with these things but they never explicitly said no if if it was a no they would have just said no so they are probably phoning home a server for every install also they say they don't uh have any way to identify the same user that was before my guess of how they intended to implement this is every time the Unity runtime is installed on a device, an API call is sent over to a server with a key associated with a the current uh, the current game that's being downloaded, and then you go, okay, this game has now been installed one time, easy. The problem is there's absolutely 
no way to protect this against piracy and no way to make sure a game doesn't get install bombed through completely automated systems. Like obviously you could go, oh, there's been a spike in like trillions of downloads. They're getting install bombed. But on a more subtler level, how do you catch the, the one-off pirates and whatnot? And the real answer is you can't. And the answer they gave was, oh, we have our whole ads slash analytics platform. We'll pull, pull code from that. Here's the thing. Pirated games, from my understanding, also sometimes remove ads. So in my mind, people pirating the software, if you're using the ads platform, the people pirating the software already would have workarounds to remove that. I do a fair amount of low-level dev. I've never tried to rip a game or anything. I feel like it'd be tr not trivially easy, but... Okay, I won't use the term easy, because what I consider to be easy is sometimes very hard, but it's definitely not impossible to get around DRM. Let <laughs> let's just say that. Pirated games exist because pirates can circumvent DRM. And whether a pirate takes out this API call or not, like, there will be some that would intentionally take it out, but for the vast majority, can I play the game? Yes, no. The install reporting does not matter. So the question is, yes, devs would still get charged for pirated games. Now, Unity has said they talk to them, get stuff resolved, but like, let's say your game is getting pirated 15% of the time. Is there any way to really detect that it is getting pirated exactly 15% of the time and dispute that? Pretty much not. Like, what are you gonna do? It'd be so much easier to just do, you know, revenue share. Tell Unity, I made this much money. Here's your cut of it. We good? And like, yeah. So obviously just the entire system is convoluted from the start, but the biggest problem is how they handled uh, this portion. The problem with the situation isn't anything to do with technology at all. Th this is not a tech problem. This is, this is a human problem. This is a problem with Unity's community, brand trust, and how they've how they've handled that. As I've already said, I, I run a company and that company is building a product built on top of Unity. Not only is it built on top of Unity, it is a framework for making multiplayer VR applications. So what that means is we have a bunch of code that we would give to another developer and then they would make something and then they would sell something using our stuff and Unity. So, if nobody wants to use Unity, nobody wants to use the product of the business that I'm running. I, I look at all this stuff that's happening and I'm like, oh, just me as uh, Eli, the Unity developer, I'm like, oh, I don't really want to use Unity anymore because they're being super shady about, about monetization. So like, what am I supposed to do? I have a business built on top of Unity, so like, I'm locked in. Uh, I have a team, people whose salaries depend on all of this. Like, I'm, I am personally fine. Like, I could switch to Unreal, I could finish my own engine. There are all these different things I could do, but I am tied to Unity by contracts with, you know, the business I'm running. It's built on top of Unity. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I don't regret that I'm running a business or anything. I don't regret that I've spent so much time on Unity because Unity, it's a decent engine that never crashes. <laughs> but, but in all serious, the tech is pretty good. Like over the last couple of years, it has gotten more scattered with packages and do you use ECS or not? Which graphics pipeline do you use out of three? Um, and all these different things which have just made it more confusing and scattered over the years. But at the core, it's, it's still a pretty decent engine, right? How am I going to edit all of this and do a coherent video structure? I should have just written a website article. Very frustrating because you don't expect the thing that you've built multiple livelihoods off of to suddenly change to do something that obviously hasn't been thought over and is the 
The hopes and dreams of upper management manifested into reality by a blog post. Because we all know that this is an upper management decision. You go on social media, you look around, you tune into live streams and voice spaces and whatnot. You look at the posts of people working at Unity, and by and large, most of them are pretty frustrated about this as well. This is quite obviously, as always, a upper management money decision. <laughs> Uh, it's like, what's his name? Let me look this up. Let's see, John Riccatello, if I am pronouncing that correctly, which I honestly don't really care, who is the current CEO of Unity, also known for his work at EA, one of the companies known for some of the worst monetization in the industry, who is quoted giving a talk about how we could charge players for ammo in a war game where, you know, people are using up ammo very quickly and has also been publicly recorded uh, cussing out game developers who do not monetize. So you can kind of see that mentality in this change where the people that suffer the most from the change are people who are very successful but do not monetize. N well, to be very precise, people who hit, hit the limits for monetization. I should really write scripts. What I'm most worried about is that this is a straw that breaks the camel's back moment. I don't think, like, I don't think it's possible for Unity to die instantly, but I do think it's possible to lose community faith immediately. Uh, one of the things that I've always thought is that having the goodwill of a community is more valuable than anything else a product, a company, or an individual can obtain. If people genuinely like you, that that's more valuable than anything else. It does not matter how good your product is if people like it, if people like you. You could have super buggy, not that great software, but if you have an awesome community, you're not a terrible person, people will still use that. On the flip side, if you have the best product on the market and people despise you, while well, yes, you will have people that use it because it is the best thing on the market, you also have a fair amount of people who just don't want to deal with you. That's what I kind of see happening to Unity, because still, good software, the pricing plan as long as you're not a mobile game with a trillion installs not as big a deal the issue is people have suddenly and quickly lost faith in the engine and that their best interests are at heart because they're not we know who's leading unity they don't care about the developers they do care about money though what i see from this point onward is unity either slowly or quickly losing their community from this point on because people just no longer trust them. And I'm not sure what that means. And I'm a little concerned. And I hope something happens. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling now.